Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today we're going to talk about modeling a deck on the hull of your ship when doing hydrodynamic analysis and ship motion prediction. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at a sample project here, uh, when you import a mesh from a modeler like Delft Ship or a Rhino project you're working on, it doesn't always include the top deck. And while you get a really nice contour of the uh, wet hull, uh, which is obviously the part that's important for hydrodynamics, and even the dry hull, uh, there isn't anything on the top. That's why it's showing all black here, even though there is uh, the rest of the ship surface there. And that's because there's no deck uh, on the top. Uh, if you try to use that mesh in uh, our 3D visualizer uh, post PDS as well, um, it might look a little disconcerting because you don't see the top of the deck and then it looks like there's water in there, but that's just because post PDS doesn't clip out the water surface. Um, uh, so that's kind of a nice visual uh, aid here to just kind of give some context to what the ship is actually doing and looking like. Um, now, why else? There, there's good hydrodynamics for reasons for doing this as well as for adding a deck. Um, when you're doing a nonlinear analysis uh, and looking at nonlinear fruit Krylov loads or uh, buoyancy, having a deck on the top means that the pressure from the water, uh, the dynamic and static pressure, will be included in the analysis. When there's a mesh on the tech, top of the deck, then it's going to account for the pressure when there's large deflections or large waves happening and um, you have water on the top of the, the surface of the boat. So it's going to properly account for those forces accordingly from the uh, fruit Krylov and buoyancy loads, or in other words, the static and dynamic pressure field uh, on the top of the ship from the uh, undisturbed water surface. So um, that comes into play in the Shipmo 3D tool set in Freemo when you're looking at the nonlinear options there. And of course, in Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox, you might be um, doing nonlinear uh, loads with a custom mesh in here as well, as well as making the visualization look better. So I'm going to show you a really quick way um, that you can do this and add these details in Rhino. So this is typically what you might see when you import a mesh from Delft Ship. Uh, well, first off, you've got to, I, I suggest you work with the whole hull. Um, you'll have to do the rotations to get it ready for import into the uh, Proteus DS uh, Shimmel 3D tool set, um, which is shown in another video tutorial, but we'll just do them really quickly right here. So we use the rotate command. And first we rotate this way, rotate again, and I'm going to use the last center and go up this way, there. Now we have the x-axis aligned to the ship and z-positive upwards um, when the time is right for uh, importing this into the Proteus DS Shipmo 3D tool set. Okay, so here's a problem. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can just take a better look at it here. So the problem here is you can't just use fill a hole uh, on, on this. So there's this button here under mesh tools, uh, fill a hole. You can also go to mesh and repair tools and fill hole. It's the same thing. Um, if you click on the top here, uh, it kind of struggles a little bit in it kind of fills the hole it's made some gaps for some reason and uh, it doesn't always do this but what I don't like is the way there's this variable kind of stepped geometry here it's rising up here but it's not up here so what we're gonna do is make a bridge across that region where I'm gonna undo that um, we're gonna make a bridge across here first and then we'll use the fill hole and then uh, remesh those nicely on the top and the bottom. So the first thing we do is we use this tool, this function called bridge. And this just makes a mesh between two parts of the mesh across a hole. So we're going to select these edges here. Then we select these edges over here. And you can pick the number of segments here. Um, you can see it basically giving it more resolution or less resolution. 
Um, I, fi I find if you use too coarse of a mesh, sometimes there's problems when you're trying to import the mesh uh, with invalid polygon. So it's probably good to use a few extra elements here uh, to get a little bit of detail in there. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to do is use mesh repair tools fill hole here and then the same thing up here there we go so <clears throat> I know this this doesn't look good uh, in addition there's some rendering artifacts here that's just because uh, we need to rebuild the normals you don't have to do that but uh, it, it's a little bit it looks a little bit strange until you do um, so I wouldn't use this mesh these are two there's another video tutorial that talks about the quality of a mesh but these are really long skewed aspect ratio elements they're really not great for getting you know uh, you're, you're I mean you'd be using this to calculate pressure over these faces you want to have sort of a nice rel more more square aspect ratio panels and certainly more of them uh, through the, these two faces here. Um, but we're going to use these as placeholders to, to remesh it. So uh, it's joined these to the main mesh. So the first thing we need to do is go back and explode it. So now we can click on that face or that face separately. Uh, what we're going to use is quad remesh. We click on this face here to quad remesh it. Um, we probably don't even need 100 elements. I don't know. Let's try 50. Um, I've been finding it handy to use the symmetry axis X, which is aligned with the ship axis along here. It just sort of fits the contour of the ship better. Of course, we want to do preview. I find it handy here to hide the input objects, and you can just take a look at it. It looks pretty good. You don't need to make sure, you don't need to match up the mesh, uh, the polygons along here. It, it's not necessary. Um, in an ideal world, it sort of everything I guess would line up but it doesn't really affect the hydrodynamic calculations that much as long as there's not gross changes in the size of the uh, panels uh, around each other um, <clears throat> so this looks reasonably good so we'll hit OK um, we want to delete the old mesh we don't want that there um, I've noticed sometimes quad remesh will produce two meshes so um, make sure there's only one uh, yeah, okay, there's only one there that's remaining. Um, I'm not sure why Rhino does that sometimes. Just keep an eye on that because you don't want two meshes there that will mean you're double counting the pressures in your hydrodynamics uh, uh, analysis. So uh, again, we'll do quad remesh on this one. Uh, now uh, there's a little bit of a curved surface in the front here, so we want to keep an eye on that. Hide input objects. Oh yeah, if you check delete input objects, it'll delete the old mesh for you. So we this is a little bit of a gap there. It doesn't doesn't really matter. You just might want to add some more elements to, you know, to to cover up that area a little bit better. It's helped, I think, maybe a tiny bit there. But um, we'll go with that for now. And let's make sure that it's not okay. I'll undo. Leave that one there. Okay. Now we need to join this all together. So we can highlight everything and go join. Now it's one big mesh. You may want to save this as a Rhino file. Uh, if you want to come back to this, we'll call this whole uh, 50 meter deck, just if you want to do some more manipulation or, or whatever to it. Um, for importing into the Shipmill 3D tool set, we have to cut it in half. So we'll do that here like this and we'll go to mesh tools and trim mesh select the cutting objects and remove this portion okay all done delete the cutting face okay, there's our half we're going to try to import we'll save this as an obj file call it half deck just to differentiate. Okay, it should be ready to go. So let's go over to Shipmill 3D here. So there's our old version without the deck. So we'll go back to panel hull, half deck, run. And when we plot panel hull, there we can see we've got a nice deck on the top there. Uh, if we look at ship parts there, 
that's looking a bit better. So most of the time in the seakeeping calculations, it doesn't affect the results. It's just when you're doing nonlinear analysis, you may want to be factoring in um, what happens when there's really extreme motions. You get you know a wave or a motion that gets it rolling enough that you know you've got you want to account for the pressure on the top of the hull. And it always helps for visualization too. All right, thanks for watching.